plug flew off an Alaska Airlines flight. Boeing. Boeing. Boeing this week. Boeing. Boeing. Boeing now. Boeing. 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 Boeing for the Boeing's defense. Boeing. 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 New questions about Boeing. If you have been online this year, chances are you heard some mistakes from Boeing because they had a rough year so far. But did you know that the company's problems actually already started in 1997? and are still continuing to this day. So we're gonna look at everything chronologically. Timestamps are in the description. And yeah, let's get going. First of all, I asked ChatGPT to create a timeline for me with the events that I put in. And yeah, th this is what it, what came out. Yeah, so I scrapped that idea and I said, you know what, let's just go over the whole thing from 1997 because that, what is this? The year is 1997. Boeing is alive and thriving, but Boeing made a deal with McDonnell Douglas. McDonnell Douglas is an already bit stained company by that point. It's a defense contractor. So this is like the first point where Boeing actually takes a step into the just financial direction instead of the engineering direction, which many people claim as the start of the downfall of Boeing, which is pretty early on considering this was 27 years ago. So yeah, we got a lot to go through. Things went quiet until 2003 to 2005, where we got a big problem coming up which is the procurement scandal. If you don't know what procurement scandal means, don't worry, I didn't know either. Let me give you a broad overview, yeah? We got three players in here, three main players. The US Air Force, a woman called Darlene Druyan, Druyan, Druyan? I don't even know how her name is pronounced, but you gotta help me in the comments with that, and I'm just gonna say Druyan because that's how I read it. She was a high-ranking official in the Air Force, a very, very valuable, position, I might say. And of course, the third player, Boeing. Julian was still a government official when she got promised a high position at Boeing. That's a clear conflict of interests. Well, what Drian did was, at that time, she was overseeing a tanker contract, that tanker like kind of plane, uh, airplane contract, and she really favored Boeing because they promised her if she retires from the Air Force, she can have a high ranking position. So yeah, she met up with the contract to get it in favor of Boeing by inflating the price and stuff. And in 2003, she retired and immediately got employed by Boeing. People that knew of this matter were like, hold on, that was very quick. Now you're thinking maybe, okay, she started at a low ranking position and just, you know, climbed the ladder faster, but it's not nothing too obvious. No, no, it, it was very, no, it was very obvious. She instantly became the vice president of the missile defense system. So of course, Government officials were like, hey, what's she doing there? Well, why is she there? Why, why is she there so fast? Let's look into that matter. And they did. And they quickly found out. And she was like, all right, I confess. I'm, I'm sorry I did these things. But you can imagine the hit that this company has taken in terms of reputation because that's, that's a whole ass scandal with government officials. It took a few years though. It took a few years for the next scandal to happen. The year is 2008. The Dreamliner 787, a plane that is promised by Boeing to be the future of commercial aviation. Everyone was looking forward to it. Uh, I may exclude myself, I can't lie. I wasn't looking forward to it. Maybe you did, let me know in the comments, because I didn't. The release was delayed, like, heavily, and we already know stuff like this. We, we are waiting for GTA 6 for the last 10 years. Anyway, you're just coming up a huge scandal involving you. Now now you're delaying stuff, now nothing's really working. Eh, that, that's just a little nudge now in your reputation. Well, in 2011, shortly after releasing the Dreamliner 787, it was finally time for commercial aviation, for traveling to be revolutionized and... Wait, hold on, what, what was that? Sorry? Oh, okay, oh, oh, uh, okay. Um, well, I guess that didn't happen because the batteries caught on fire regularly. They they started it and it just didn't work. Imagine you're like the CEO and you're and you're there for the first flight of your plane that will revolutionize air travel. And you wait and you're like, well, I mean, I guess now it goes up, right? Like it, it has to go there, but it's like still it's still here, but it needs to go up. It needs to go in the sky. Why is it still in front of me? Imagine, imagine the CEO not only seeing your plane not go into the direction, like upwards, anywhere, but the battery's burning. You're like, yes, come on, yes, come on. Oh, um, oh, no, that ain't supposed to happen. No, no, no. He must have been stressed. And so the consequence of that was that 2013, the 
Dreamliner 787 fleet was grounded. Well, look at the future of commercial aviation, ladies and gentlemen. It went a little silent around Boeing for the next couple of years. But then the big thing happened. 2018 to 2019, the Boeing 737 MAX line experienced two crashes in the span of five months. Not only did they crash, they also killed 300 and 46 people, which is a lot of people that got killed, like actually many people died on there. Nobody wanted to fly Boeing flights anymore. Everybody was asking like, oh sorry, is that a Boeing? And well, all of a sudden, yeah, I, I remember, I just don't want to go. So yeah, they crashed because of, hold on, automated flight control system. And in response to that, the entire 737 MAX fleet was grounded. No, no spoilers, they should have kept it grounded, to be honest. Following the grounding of the fleet, emails resurfaced, written by employees of Boeing. They were mocking government officials. Not only that, but they discussed the problems with the line before it even came out, the 737 MAX. So they knew. I'm gonna show you some things they said. May 2018, I still haven't been forgiven by God for the covering up that I did last year. I just received the shovel to start my journey to the hotter place. I'll end up there anyway. So this person basically said they covered up and they feel so bad for covering up that they deserve to go to hell. Damn. May 2018. I'll be shocked if the FAA passes this turd. Well, spoilers, they did pass it, but yeah, it is a turd apparently. March 2018. Not sure I will be returning in April given this. I am not lying to the FAA. We'll leave that to the people who have no integrity. The employees themselves really didn't feel comfortable with the publishing of the 737 MAX line. But now we got the best one. April 2017. This airplane is designed by clowns who in turn are supervised by monkeys. That's harsh, but I guess, yeah, you're right. Now they got a lawsuit on their hands as well. Like, they got the full package, the whole thing. Like, they got the Pro Max version of scandals. Not only did they experience deaths of people by their hands, basically, they experienced failure of their product, a huge hit to their reputation, a whole lot of money lost, a grounding of a whole fleet of theirs, but now they also got a lawsuit. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you received the full package. But in 2020, Boeing made probably the biggest mistake of their career yet. I'm saying like Boeing is a person, like this is still, still a company, but they put the 737 MAX back in service. Why? Nobody knows. They just experienced two fatal crashes. Then in 2021, the Dreamliner 787 had production issues, so they restarted the Dreamliner 787 program, but no major problems in that year. Just keep the Dreamliner 787 in mind when we get to this year, because uh, damn. In 2023, there was a production hold of the 737 MAX line and that would that should be a sign to not produce this anymore. As if there weren't enough problems with it already, like you could have just said, okay, no, you know what? Now the distributor is even not working properly, we should scrap this. But they didn't. And now we're back in this year, February to be exact, because in February, the Boeing 737 MAX had another problem. And a big one to be fair, because the flight controls jammed during the landing. Fortunately, no one was hurt, no one was injured. But imagine you're sitting on a plane and you think you're done and while landing, shit started to go south. What is that timing? The pilot said he experienced stuck rudder pedals during the landing rollout. So you basically think it's over and then at the last second, Boeing says, oh no, that don't celebrate too early. Nah boss, you're not done. Oh, you know what I've just seen? Never mind, that wasn't the first thing that happened this year. Boeing got another problem even in January. The report the report on the jam flight control says the investigation is the latest to involve a newly new Boeing 737 MAX aircraft following the door plug blowout on an Alaska Airlines 737 MAX 9 on January 5. Door plug blowout? Just imagine you're a stewardess on this flight. You're handing out coffee left, right and center Adding a little snacks, little sweets, and the next thing you hear is the door plug blowing out, and you're like, who was leaving mid-flight? Who says, you know what, I'm gonna go? And of course, we had January, we had February, and now you're thinking, no, they can't do it again in March, can they? Oh, they surely can, they did it again. March 2024, the 787 Dreamliner, there it is again, it plunged mid-flight. Injured 60 people, including the captain. Now, authorities in New Zealand are investigating what's been described as a sudden mid-air drop on a LATAM Airlines flight, which injured dozens of people on Monday. One man on board tells CNN the pilot checked on passengers after landing. But this is interesting, that after that, 
he actually told people that he lost control of the airplane after his gauges malfunctioned. Here's how that passenger described what happened. Listen. Um, I had dozed off and uh, luckily had my seatbelt engaged. And uh, the next thing you know, the, 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 the plane, as I've kind of un kind of learned to understand, dropped something to the effect of 500 feet instantly. And then had the effect of uh, it coming like a roller coaster and then started to point down. Opened my eyes and there was various individuals at the top of the plane just stuck to the roof and then they fell to the floor. Now, I'm sorry. Imagine you're sleeping in a plane, you wake up, the first thing you see is some people over at the top of the roof. You're like, hey, why, yo, hold on, what's happening? Then you look straight and you and you slowly realize that the plane is not going in this direction, but in this direction, you're like, oh, oh yeah, we dying here today. I'm terrified of flying, that would kill me. And how do you feel when, when you hear this? Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I regret to inform you that I have lost complete control over the plane, and we're now plunging 500 feet downwards. Hope you're still having a nice ride, and see you there. How has that happened? So we got one month off. Yeah, April, nothing major happened. I think you can still find problems that Boeing has faced in April, but in May 2024, the Starliner should launch. What is the Starliner? We already got promised the absolute revolution in commercial aviation with the 787 Dreamliner, but now the Starliner. Starliner is a project of sending people to space. Like, it's a rocket. It's a rocket and a capsule, and that's basically it. In May 2024, Boeing cancelled the Starliner launch already because there were helium leaks in the capsule's propellant system, which basically means we ain't going anywhere. But then it finally launched in June, and now you're thinking, oh, they did something right. Hold your horses. Hold your horses because that's not it. It doesn't end there because the two astronauts who were launched in June, you're thinking like, oh, when did they come back? They're not back. They're still there. And Boeing said in August 2024, couple of days ago, they said, sorry, but we can't rescue them until February 2025 and SpaceX needs to do it. So they're basically saying, we can't handle this, SpaceX, help us. It should only have been a week long test flight and they were up there for two months and now they're realizing, oh shit, they are only being rescued February 2025. Eight months up there, that's a lot. And while these two astronauts were up there, they tested with the Starliner capsule and they realized there were still so many problems with it. Now they're up there, they can't go back down because it would be too dangerous. But the two astronauts say they're insanely chill with it. Even the wife of one astronaut is like, I ain't be like that sometimes. They're really chilling at the desk said, oh yeah, that's, that's not too bad. We can wait until February. I will be freaking out. The Starliner actually had problems for ages. In 2019, the software fouled, they couldn't start. After that, helium leaks. Thruster failure, well, <laughs> heard that before. And they lost about $1 billion on this project. And they still said, okay, now we invested so much, let's just send them up there, fuck it. But that's the whole timeline of Boeing's problems. Boeing is currently, yeah, they're in the deep end. Let's, let's hope my reputation is never as tarnished as Boeing's is. And yeah, see you lot in a bit. And I would say that's enough internet for today, but this is not part of that series. So, bye, I guess.